Hey folks, how you doing tonight? Papa Joe here. Right here in Colorado. It's a little nipply. Got my long sleeves on. You don't see that happen often. And it's springtime. Somebody forgot to tell Colorado that. Hey, uh, this here going to be my number two tape on being prepared. I've got some feedback on it. Got a little bit more stuff I want to add in there. Uh, some of the feedback I got, uh, one old boy told me that, uh, instead of doing all the shampoo and body soap and whatnot, he said to, uh, do Dawn. Said he'd been using it for shampoo and body soap and dishes and laundry and everything. That, that's a pretty good idea. So, uh, just a matter if you're one of those that don't want to use Dawn on your hair, I reckon. But now you got to remember why we're doing this. We're doing this simply because of emergencies. In emergencies, sometimes you learn to uh, just deal with it and be glad you got whatever you got. So that's another thought for you right there. I kind of like that idea. That was a good idea. Thank you, Lance. So uh, now my little girlfriend, that's Lance's wife, so don't tell him. Uh, me and her had chatted the other day, and I would mentioned a couple things that I didn't get on another video, so uh, she chastised me. Sent me a little note here. With a little bit of stuff she's thinking now, see? That, that's what this is about. Me to give you a few ideas, and then you take it and run with it. I'm not the know-all, do-all, by no stretch of imagination. I'm a damned old hillbilly. I happen to have a little bit of common sense, you know. Uh, this happens to be something that I've thought about a little bit. So uh, that's why I'm step up on a few people. Now also you should understand that if you're watching these videos and you're doing this stuff, you are now what is classified as a squirrel. It don't mean that you're as nuts as I am. It means you're squirreling away stuff. Now you're not a prepper yet. Because the prepper is the one that goes overboard. And he buried the school bus and the container and all that out there on the back 40. So hopefully you ain't gone. If you've gone that far, I need to take some lessons from you. So, uh, all right, I told you what Lance had to say. Let me uh, bring this up. I had told her about some uh, fire starters. And uh, my son... Uh, Vicky, he, he says he knows where that one is about the match uh, fire starter. So I hope to be sharing that with you. I can't, I ain't, can't share it on this channel. Uh, what we're talking about there, folks, is you get the old wooden strike all matches. One that strikes anywhere. You got to be careful because most of them nowadays only strike on the box. And it will tell you on the box. Strike only on box or strike anywhere. Uh... I had seen a video, old boy took a match, and uh, say this is the end of the match, the lighter part, you know, that you strike the light, and he took, oh, let me take cord off of this thing, what he did is he took some thread, now I doubt if he used the thinnest type, probably something for like blue jeans or, or uh, something like that. And he just kept wrapping that thing around it real tight. We've all done that, messing around with different stuff. Let me plug you back in. Uh, but he did that, and he made a pretty good size wad of thread on that match, pretty much all the way up. Now, he had a straight pin that he had stuck in the very end, not the end with the striker. Here's our striker end. He stuck a straight pin in this end. So he wraps this thread all on there, almost all the way up. He had some melted wax and candle wax. And he would dip this thing down in there, let it cool off a minute, dip it down in there. And he did that a few times to get a good coat of wax on there, which uh, he was wanting the wax to get into that thread. We all realize that, okay? Now the whole thing's covered with wax, except the end where this was. He did take straight pin out, and he did this. Dip that in. Excuse me. 
Now the reason he did that is now this match is totally coated in wax. It's about as waterproof as you're going to get. Now when he went to use it and the video showed him, and you can find the video on YouTube. He just took in the fingernail and he scratched the wax off the end of that striker in and he struck it. Well, it flared up, of course. Well, now he's got all that wax and all that thread right there. And you lay it down with a little bit of kindling. Boom. You got a fire going. So uh, I'm going to try to find that for those of you that know me. And on my Facebook, I'm going to try to put it on there. Those of you that don't, don't know me, look it up on YouTube. Uh, most of the stuff I tell you, I've got off YouTube. Uh, I had also told her about... Uh, Another fire starter, get you a cardboard egg grate. Like you buy your dozen eggs and stuff or the three dozen whatever. Make sure it's cardboard, not the styrofoam. All right, so buy you some eggs out of with car, uh, cardboard. Save your lint out of your dryer. All right, you don't ever do nothing with it anyway, but throw it away. Well, let's put it to use. You take that egg crate and you put, start packing that lint down in there and you fill up that carton with lint. All right. Now the person I seen doing it, I'm not sure if they did this part or not, but it ain't a bad idea. You've got to go buy some wax anyway. Okay. And you know, you can get the wax in the blocks. It's not a candle. Uh, well, right beside it, they're going to sell wicks. Well, get you some candle wicks, cut you off a little piece of it, and put it in there. Now, it ain't got to be purty. It don't have to be straight in the top, you know. So if you pick up a piece of that lint, because that's going to be in there in layers, stick that wick in the side there and put that last piece on top of it. Now you're going to melt some of your wax, and you're going to pour it over that lint. All right. Let it set up and dry. Put it away. Now what you're going to do with it is when you need it, that pair of scissors I told you to put in that five-gallon bucket, take some scissors and cut out one little egg thing. you got a fire starter. Light that wick on there, and it's going to go on over there, and it's going to catch stuff on fire, and you got your pretty good little fire starter. Uh, let's see what else she told me here. She did mention Wesson oil. Which, you know, it doesn't hurt to have wasn't all around for anything. So, uh, we discussed hurricane lamps. And she put it on here. Now, we do have, I don't know, three or four hurricane lamps. Now, if you're on the run, try and get away from the bad guys because the whole town done ran out of food and they're raiding you. You ain't gonna worry about that kerosene lamp. But while everything's mellow, it doesn't hurt to have that kerosene lamp. Hur hurricane lamp or kerosene, whatever y'all call it in your neck of the woods. Well, you can pick up that oil pretty cheap and it's in gallon jugs. And yes, we have some of it stashed away ourselves. Uh, heck it is, we like using hurricane lamps just for being hurricane lamps. So for us, it's multi-purpose. We, like using them and we've got them for whenever we need them uh, so there is a little thought there dead gummy phone keeps going down on me now she mentioned big lighters and actually I thought about that myself today dear so you're on the right page it doesn't hurt to throw a couple big lighters in them buckets now you still want your matches the big lighter is going to run out. <coughs> and I don't know the life spell on a big lighter. I ain't got a clue. But I do know that stuff happens. And if it happens to be in there and all the lighter fluid goes out of it, it ain't going to work too good. The matches, don't know the lifetime on them, but it should be a fairly decent amount of time. So the big lighter ain't a bad idea. Uh, uh, she put down on here glow sticks. Eh, it might not hurt in the right situation. Once again, I don't know the lifetime of them, 
before you go get them. Find a, do a little research. Find out what the lifetime of them is. In the right scenario, they would be great. If you're doing the uh, uh, evasive thing where you're trying to dodge people and don't want them to know where you're at, not a good idea. But for your emergency around the house, if the storm came in, electric went out, yeah, they're great. Not a problem there at all. Now, I had told her that uh, my goals, which I haven't achieved yet, and I suggested for her and Lance, is uh, start raising a few rabbits and chickens. Uh, if you want to do a cow and a pig, it ain't a bad idea. The pigs, they smell. And they smell long after they're gone. I understand that. So don't think that you're going to buy you two or three feeder pigs, and that's what they call the little babies. It's done been weaned, the feeder pig. Same thing with the calves. Just off the tit. Or some of them don't even make it on the tit because they're a dairy cow. But they're called feeders. Uh, you run out and buy you two or three feeder pigs and you put them in that pen over there and I know this from personal experience I did this when my kids was young and I didn't realize it until later but uh, we raised up pigs for a couple years there and it was cool got good meat out of it uh, did a couple different barbecues but it was all cool well I decided I was going to get into chickens well I want to do chickens and I love chickens I like watching them they're fun to watch uh, chickens, you're getting meat, and you're getting eggs, you know, you're getting fertilizer, chickens are good. Uh, well, I just went ahead and closed in that same area that I had them pigs in because I had one shed out back. Them chickens got scratching and carrying on, you smelt the pigs, and that hung around, and I'm being told that hangs around forever, so that's just a word of caution if you're going to do pigs. Remember, if you do pigs... You're going to have pig smell wherever you had them pretty much forever. So there you go on that. Uh, the rabbits. If you're going to do rabbits, you need to do a little research on them, and especially if you're in the south, because they do overheat pretty easy. And when you go doing the rabbits, the biggest advice, best advice I can give you is about breeding. And you can do a chart that would tell you when to breed them and all that. That ain't what I'm getting at. Uh, when the males go getting too hot because of the temperatures, they don't produce as good. So if you're going to do it, you don't want to really uh, be breeding them in the heat of the summer. And if it is getting warm, warm spring, early summer, late summer type thing, you want to put them two together late of a night or early of a morning. I would suggest early of a morning because uh, then they can take care of business. You go out there and you got to feed on everything before you go to work anyway. You stick him over there in her pen and uh, you go take care of your business, get ready to go and right before you leave work. She, he done been in there for 10 minutes, whatever. You go take him out and put him back in his pen. But remember, rabbits overheat so uh, if you're doing rabbits and you're not getting as many offspring as you think, chances are you bring them at the wrong time of day and the old male's getting hot and they're a little bit sterile when they get hot. So uh, there you go. That's that one. And uh, I had also mentioned to her about a compost pile. So your compost pile, if you got the chickens and the cows and all that, you're going to be throwing sawdust and... Uh, straw and all that you should be lining your chicken house with that that way the manure will stick to it and it's easier to clean up same thing if you've got your cow in any kind of a tight enclosure well put all that stuff out there do a little research on the compost right there's a good start on compost which is good for your garden your garden leads us right into the uh, heirloom seeds now do you know what a heirloom seed is you know they cost a little bit more. The difference between them and the regular seeds that you're getting out of your Walmart grocery store, wherever you're getting your seeds at, the regular seeds that cost 99 cents for the pack, 
goodbye. And it is if you want only one plant because that seed is only going to produce one plant. Let's use tomatoes. So you grow the tomato. When you harvest one of them tomatoes and you say, all right, I'm going to use this and I'm going to grow me tomatoes next year. So you're going to process that, dry it out so that you can use those seeds. Ain't going to work with the generic altered vegetables we have today. I got wondering because when I was a kid, we had big gardens and we had, we call them volunteers because they come up on their own. They voluntarily come up. We had volunteers coming up everywhere. You don't see that anymore simply because they messed around with the genetics and they, the plant that you're buying is going to do better, make a better vegetable supposedly and all this bigger, brighter, prettier, whatever, whatever new and improved and wait there's more uh your heirloom those you can take and plant them like i said they're going to cost you more the seeds are and if you watch when you wherever you're buying your plants they will say on there if they're heirloom they will say if it doesn't say heirloom then it ain't a heirloom but they will say heirloom because they're going to charge you more for that plant and it's worth it your heirloom seeds uh you can take one of your maters off of it, dry it out, and you can harvest some seeds for next year. So that's the difference. Uh, if you're going to do that and you're going to put this away, go to some of the heirloom sites or some of the prepper sites, and they will actually give you a list, and they'll have a, uh, a doomsday packet is what I'll call it for this. I don't know what they really call it. And they will list on there all these different things that you need to have a decent diet and to survive. And uh, I don't remember. It's been a couple years, but it seems like it was like $100 for all kinds of seeds. You don't have to spend that much. I'm just saying. So go to some of them heirloom sites that uh, know what they're talking about. And they can tell you on that stuff. Uh, now then, yeah, and she put down Ziploc, gallon size Ziploc baggies. I would hope that you'd have that for some of the stuff I was telling you put in its own baggie. And, uh, she mentioned where I'd talk to her about rock salt, which is going to take us into a couple things. And I don't know if I want to put it on this one here because it's getting long on the tape. I'm going to talk to you in a little bit on the next tape. And I'm going to talk to you about the rock salt, how to smoke cure some meat. Uh, a couple other ideas I came up with that I decided I'd share with you. So for now, God bless you all. I hope you enjoy the videos. Thank you all for your input. If you all have anything that you want to add to this, just like these other folks did, I appreciate your input. Uh, you all put it in the comments and I'll see if I can't work it into one of the videos. Like I said, I'm not a know-all, do-all. And anything that I'm telling you, do your own homework. Do your own homework. Just because this old hillbilly said it, don't make it 100%. So, God bless you. You have a good day. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. Bye.